Hello, welcome to The Real Bit Wars. I'm Chris, and once again, I've got all sorts of new stuff to show off. Um, but before we get started here, I'm going to enjoy a beer during this episode. And um, this is part of a bit of a theme we got in the early going here. This is the Lakefront Brewery 35th Anniversary Doppelbach. So this brewery is based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And speaking of Milwaukee... I'm going to be there in a couple of short weeks here at the Midwest Gaming Classic. My friend Mike and I will be attending once again. And if you're going to be there, let me know in the comments. Or if you happen to see us there, flag us down and say hello. We would love to meet as many YouTubers as possible while we're there. But happy 35th anniversary to Lakefront. It's a fantastic brewery if you've never heard of it. Okay. So, hold on. Yes. Box. That's where it's at, buddy. Mm. I enjoy box, man. Okay, so another thing I want to do is give a shout out to a YouTuber. And I think this is probably a channel that most of the people who watch this channel haven't heard of this guy. And, um... How I became familiar with his channel is he attends the Midwest Gaming Classic. He's a part of a collective called Guys, Games, and Beer. They do this podcast, and they have this whole showcase they set up every year at the convention. They do tournaments and all sorts of fun stuff. They let people come in and play their games. So awesome. Um, so he's a part of that group, but his individual channel is called Retro Rob. I think a lot of you would probably enjoy it. So I'm going to put a link down below. Go check it out. He's a bit of a tech whiz. He likes to take things apart and deconstruct and look at the inner workings of controllers and consoles and whatnot. He does pickup videos and live streams, amongst other things. So check out Retro Rob. Very cool guy with a great channel. I don't think he and I have met, but um, I've talked to some of the other guys, games and beer guys at um, the MGC, so... Hopefully one of these years I can actually meet Rob. But on to the pickups here. Um, just found this a couple days ago. <laughs> Monsters Inc. and the PS1. You might wonder why the heck I would buy that. I've been finding PS1 and PS2 games at my local thrift stores again. That has not happened for a very long time. You might have seen in my most recent pickup video I found some PS2 games. So yeah, it was $1.99. I'll buy a PS1 game that I don't have for 2 bucks all day, every day. I'll pick up, I don't care what it is. I will buy it for $2. Okay, a lot of video games here, but I have a couple of other things to show off. There's also a NES game for the countdown, which I will show you. Just got these today, some DVDs. These were very cheap, like $0.99 cents a piece. I am Fright Night. I loved the first one. I thought the remake was pretty good. So I got this second one. I don't have the highest of hopes for it. But, you know, given the fact that I enjoy the franchise, I thought, why the heck not? Yeah, Masters of Terror. I kind of, I love collecting these crappy, like, uh, collections of horror movies. <laughs> um, what sold me on this one is this Mortuary one was directed by Toby Hooper. I'm trying to collect every Toby Hooper movie, so that was one I needed. Again, another thing I collect, the Midnight Movies. People that time forgot. Um, the thing about uh, trying to complete this set of the Midnight Movies is you end up with duplicates. And I already have this one in a double feature, but I did not have the individual one. I know it's ridiculous, but that's just what I do. Again, very cheap, couldn't resist, Night of the Living Dead. I've always seen this particular release of it because it's a public domain movie, but this one sticks out to me. And for that price, I couldn't resist. Uh, awesome movie. It's an all-time classic. Okay. So, I got a bundle of import stuff. This is really cool. I'm super excited about all these. I'm going to show you these super Famicom games I got. Um, some of this stuff isn't the type of thing I would have necessarily sought out individually. But as a whole bundle, this is... Really cool stuff. So one of the things in there, I've always wanted to get the multicolor button uh, su uh, Super Famicom controller. So here it is. I finally have one in the collection. This just looks so cool. I love the way that looks. And 
I think, it, you know, most people can relate when I say I always want more controllers. It's just nice to have extra ones on hand. Sometimes uh, they break because, you know, you accidentally drop them when you're mad at a game. It happens. But yeah, extra controller, which is awesome. And then all of these are complete. Street Fighter II, the new challengers. So what's really cool about this one is you have this... Um, art on the box but then like the cartridge and the manual have completely unique artwork on them so i'm no expert on this by any means but um from what i know this game was released here in north america as street, uh, super street fighter so i don't know that there's any difference between them but this is still kind of cool i definitely like the way that one looks got so much stuff here man Okay, this, I believe, well, I know for a fact it was never released in the United States. It's a rugby game. We didn't get a whole lot of rugby games here, but world-class rugby. Little bit of sun fading going on there. You can see the colors a little more crisp on the side there. Uh, but again, 100% complete, and Anything that wasn't released here, I'm always intrigued by, even if it is a sports game. <laughs> but you're going to see a couple more of those in here, like this one here. we got the J-League Super Soccer. Um, I know that there were multiple games in this series. Um, it could have been the same one, but um, my buddy Mike, one time when we were at the Midwest Gaming Classic, he picked up a uh, Mega Drive one. So yeah, maybe it was this exact same game. But in any event, uh, I don't think we got any of these J-League soccer games here. And yeah, you're not going to be all that excited about a soccer game, but complete Super Famigon games, that's always pretty dang cool. So listen, this is kind of a sport. Uh, it's one of those wrestling games. Um, this is, I believe, All Japan Pro Wrestling. So we did not get this here. However, they use the same engine... Um, to give us the Natsume Championship Wrestling. So I do have that, but it's not 100% identical. It is its own unique game, and I think there were like two or three of them, perhaps, on the Super Famicom. Uh, correct me if that's wrong. But yeah, 16-bit wrestling games can be very hit or miss, but this one looks kind of cool. I'm excited to check this out. And a lot of times, these Japanese games, they'll throw American wrestlers on there, too, so... We'll have to see who's actually on the roster for this one. Here's another one. I never would have won, gone out of my way to buy this. But um, we got Ultimate Football. That is like the worst cover I've ever seen. And if they only could have put a real team on there instead of that crappy one that I can't stand. Um, we did get this one here too. It's called Football Theory. Yeah, just a little comparison. Yeah. American football. Ooh, let's put the flag on there so everybody knows what it is. It's, it's a little ridiculous. Okay, a couple more here. Yet another sports game. I'm sorry, folks. But Japanese exclusive, final set. Tennis. Um, I would never play tennis or watch it on TV or anything, but tennis video games are usually pretty fun, at least the good ones. And it looks like it's par for the course, but still... I will give it a shot, see how it is. And then here's the reason why I picked up this bundle. We got the Multi-Tap 2. I'm a Bomberman enthusiast, and yeah, I've always wanted this Bomberman Multi-Tap. I'm going to pull this out, show you what it looks like here real quick. If you've never seen it, but it is a Multi-Tap, so you can do five-player Bomberman. And it's in the shape of his head. So this would plug into the second player port, and then you can do four controllers in there. So yeah, five players all at once. This is in nice shape. It looks really cool. I don't know if I'll display it in the box or if I'll take it out, put both of them. At some point, I wouldn't mind having like a sort of Bomberman shrine put somewhere in my game room, but uh, maybe someday I'll get around to actually doing that. So this is kind of cool, too. I got some records. So there's a guy I buy a lot of my vinyl from. He had a couple of B-52 singles. I have almost all of their albums, so I thought maybe I'll start branching off getting their 12-inch singles here. 
a lot of times these have extras on them, different mixes and non-album tracks, things like that. Um, we got, I forget how to even say that, Girl from Ipanema Goes to Greenland, I believe is how you say it. And this one is Summer of Love. These are two singles from the um, Bouncing Off the Satellites era, which is, in my opinion, their most underrated album. So while I was picking those up, it always pays to ask. I contacted him and I said, do you have any other B-52 stuff? I would be interested. And he hit me back with something really, really cool. He had two bootleg LPs of live performances from the 70s. So I snagged those right away as well. This is Gumbo. And this one is here, um, B-52's Do Summer Salts. And their bootlegs, they actually messed up the track listing on the back of this one. But you can see when they're still a five piece there. And um, I want to say it was like seven, yeah, 78 Gumbo was from. And this one was from very close to that same time period. Uh, but just classic B-52 stuff here. Uh, I didn't even know that these existed. So it was very, very interesting to find them. Okay, we got a couple more things here. I'm going to save that NES game for last here, but very quickly, I have been on an autobiography kick lately. So I read the Mel Brooks one. It's awesome. This has actually inspired me to make a video all about him. You will probably see that later this year, if not, maybe even into next year. It's going to take a little bit of time for me to get through that uh, the whole editing process on that one and everything. But then in addition to that, I got the Jackie Chan autobiography. And then I found out he had a second one. So I was like, what the heck? I'll read them both. Um, this one was published in 98. This was 20 years later, 2018. Uh, I would say, unless you're a diehard fan, it's probably not necessary to read both of them. But this was first published right around the time he was becoming uh, popular, like outside of Asia. So... He's not going to talk a lot about the movies that you're most familiar with in this one. And in this one, he will. So for what, whatever that's worth, um, some may enjoy one better than the other. But unless you're a diehard fan like me, you probably don't need to read them both. You can maybe just stick to the original one. I do have um, a few more DVDs sitting over here. There's just so much stuff piled up in front of me right now. I've got all these games. I couldn't resist. Again, thrift store just a couple days ago. Good Eats. They had like seven of these bad boys. I think there were a total of nine in this volume. And then there was also a red one. There's like three or four episodes on each of these. I love this show. Elton Brown is just awesome. So again, couldn't resist, especially for the price. We got to drink some more of this Doppelbach because I do not want it to get warm. Yeah. All right. And then for the countdown... Last, but most certainly not least. Toki. Go ape spit, baby. Yeah, if you've never heard of this one, you play as this monkey right here, and uh, your projectile is you spit on your enemies. So I've only played it a little bit, but I actually enjoy it. It might be a decent game. We'll see if I sink my teeth into it a little bit more. We'll see uh, exactly how good it really is, but... Always excited to get a new NES game. Got a pretty solid deal on it. It did have like a little discoloration. It was dirty. I kind of cleaned it up. And you can see there's a bit of a ding on the label there. Other than that, it's in solid shape, I would say. I'm happy with it. But that does it for today's episode. Thank you for watching The Real Bit Wars. And hopefully I will see you at the Midwest Gaming Classic.